Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. We're still in section uh, 8.13. Uh, hold on, yeah, 8.13. Um, so we've just discussed how you can describe waves using cosines, and you can also use waves uh, using um, imaginary numbers or complex numbers. Uh, for this instance, I want to explain to you why it is that physicists and mathematicians, when we learn about how to use um, complex notation, we, we switch to that for writing how we, the wave functions and doing math with wave functions. Okay, so um, suppose that we have two, three wave functions. We have uh, f1 and we have X, uh, f2 and then f3 is the sum of them. The uh, wave number of f1 and f2, and they're in the same medium of course, the wave number of f1 and f2 are the same, so hopefully we'll get something that looks the same when we uh, get the result. I'll just show you kind of the the the, the trigonometric uh, uh, backflips you have to do to, to get the answer out of this. So we can write our wave functions f as some amplitude times the cosine of the wave number kappa or x uh, minus omega t uh, plus the phase constant. Oops, I did a subscript right there. No subscript. No subscript. Okay, so that's a generic way of writing a wave function of, uh, you know, one uh, one sinusoidal um, wave number there. So if we add the two together, we get um, A1. So let's write that out. Let's write A1 cosine of kx minus omega t because they're the same wave number, they're going to have the same frequency. And then uh, K1 is phase constant of delta 1. And then F2, Kx minus omega t plus D2. And kind of by assumption, we're going to assume we're going to get a wave back that um, has the same wave number. Uh, a different phase constant and a different amplitude. Okay, so this is F3 over here, this is F2, and this is F1. Now, um, at this point, you, you should be kind of stuck unless you remember the the trigonometric identity that goes cosine of something plus something is equal to cosine of A times cosine of B minus sine of A times sine of B. That's that whole sine, cosine, cosine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, sine. This is the cosine, cosine, sine, sine part. And so over here we have our A's. And then we have a B here. Um, and this one has a different A and a different B, but you'll see. It'll look, it'll look pretty. So we have A1. Someone, people keep commenting that they can't read as I write, so I'm going to try to kind of hold the pen out this way, so hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm writing. So A1 times cosine, cosine, sine, sine. So cosine of kx minus omega t cosine of d1 delta 1 minus sine of the same and sine of the same. That's a1 and we're going to add a2 cosine. My handwriting is bad because this is not natural for me to write like this. First of all this is a fat pen and second of all um, I, I'm used to having my hand directly over what I write. Um, anyway, uh, sine of d2. Okay, and that's going to equal a3 cosine of kx minus omega t cosine of d3 minus sine of kx minus omega t sine of d3. All right, okay. Um, this is the point where um, it's not at all obvious um, how to combine the terms so you can calculate what a3 is and d3 is. But if you rearrange the terms thusly, let me kind of draw this out for you. So you take these two guys, so you have a1 cosine d1 plus a2 cosine d2 times this, this term, and then a1 sine d1, a2 sine d2 times this term, then you're going to have a3 cosine, cosine d3, so a3 d3, a3 cosine d3 of this term, 
and then minus a3 sine d3 of that term. And so a1 cosine d1 plus a2 cosine d2 is equal to a3 cosine d3. Let me write that out for you. Let's write it out this way. So we get a1 cosine d1 plus a2 cosine of d2 is equal to a3 cosine of d3 and the same for the sines oh that's a sine I was thinking right sine right sine don't, don't write cosine and that negative thought was the one that got written okay so we have these these two things here and and the the trigonometric way of writing this out doesn't really suggest to you what's really going on and what's really going on is you have these these three vectors and let's get three different colors I've already been using pink I almost used orange there let's get another nice uh, a nice light blue okay so we're gonna have so let's suppose we had our a1 and I probably shouldn't have that a3 because it kinda stands out more than the others and then we have our a2 and uh, oh well it'll make sense this is a3 and it's kind of like a vector uh, except for instead of describing the vector with the x and y um, we're, we're using uh, the magnitude and the the angle so this is a two vector and oh, my cat go. okay this is a one vector okay so um, two dimensions each of these forms an angle with the horizon. Let me kind of draw that out if I can. Uh, so this one is an angle there of D3. Okay. This one has an angle here of D1. Or that's D2, not D3. Orange is 2. Pink is 3. And this one has an angle with the horizon of D3. Okay. And um, it's not at all obvious how to how to find the magnitude and the direct the the angle of a vector given the other two vectors. But um, if if you look at it geometrically, you can see that you can use the law of cosines, where this angle between a1 and a2 is just equal to you know d2 minus d1, or by the way, vice versa. So you have you have the angle. Um, a law of cosines. We'll give it this length. So we have the law of cosines. So a 3 squared is equal to a1 squared plus a2 squared minus 2a1 a2 cosine of d1 minus d2 and if you got it backwards it doesn't matter cosines even so it'll work out and then so that'll give you the magnitude of a3 how do you get the the angle well this a1 cosine d1 is the x component of the a1 vector and a2 cosine d2 is the x component of the a2 vector this is the y component that's the y component and so the you know sine over cosine of that angle you take th these guys and divide them by these guys so you're gonna get uh, you know the tan is equal to a1 sine d1 plus a2 divided by a1 plus a2 okay and there's your solution um, of course you have to take the square root to find the absolute magnitude and over here you take the arctan so we are done okay so think of what we had to do in order to get to the answer is we had to basically go to two dimensions halfway through the problem and we had to think of the the phase constant as an actual angle right normally you don't think of it you think you think the phase constant, oh, that's an offset, you know. But here we actually had to use an angle, a physical geometrical angle. We had to use a lot of cosines. We had uh, to remember that, you know, the tangent is, is the uh, x, uh, y component over the x component and uh, take advantage of that as well. So if we switch to using complex notation, all of that geometrical interpretation falls right out, right away. So let me show you what I mean by that. So in the complex notation, we're going to say f3 is equal to f1 plus f2, which is the same as saying the real of the complex f3 is equal to the real of the
complex F1 plus F2. Okay, so what's F3? Well, F, uh, the complex F is equal to the complex amplitude times e to the i kx minus omega t, right? And remember the phase constant is absorbed into this complex number right there. Okay, such that the, you can write it out this way. Okay, so for this is the generic for the wave function. So we add them together, we basically get um, complex A3 e to the i k x minus omega t is equal to complex A1 e to the i k x minus omega t plus the complex A2 e to the i k x minus omega t for this problem because they had the same wave number. So obviously you can factor that out. Okay, so A3 is just A1 plus A2. That's basically the thing. We, so the complex A3 is equal to the complex A1 plus the complex A2. Now you start off given the, amp, the magnitude and the phase constant in this way, but really this is the same as A cosine of delta plus um, I A sine of delta, right? you know, using uh, Euler's equation there. And so you can just instantly convert this, these, these things into actual two components of the real and the, the, the imaginary parts, add up the real parts, and you get the real magnitude, add up the complex parts, you get the complex, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the, the imaginary part. And then to the two together, you know, you just use tangent or whatever to find what the angle is and rewrite it in terms of that you, that you would understand. So, Basically, using the complex notation, we already had this idea in mind that this wave function is, uh, you know, th this this amplitude is actually a two vector, you know, in, in the real and complex um, directions. Whereas here, it's not at all obvious that that's what's going on. That this this delta actually has a geometrical interpretation that you can use to add it together. So. Anyway, I hope this helps. I hope that, you know, thinking in terms of the complex numbers, uh, over time it should get more and more natural. Uh, it should be easier to, to solve problems using, using this, but this is really the more easier way to approach uh, solving wave, wave problems. So, hope this helps. Thanks for your time.